and welcome. In this video, we're going to be going over the basics on how to use the A-Meeting call panel. So if you are new to A-Meeting and just getting started, this video is for you. We're going to be going over all the basic features in the call panel. So if you're interested in just one section, check out the description in this video to skip ahead. Otherwise, let's get started. You should have received a username and password for your A-Meeting login. So if you haven't yet, go to A-Meeting dot cloud to go to the sign in page. I would recommend bookmarking this page. So to do that in Google Chrome, you are going to hit the settings button and then go down to bookmarks and lists. And then you can click bookmark this tab and it's going to give the name sign in. I'm going to change that to a meeting and hit done. Now that's saved as a bookmark, but if I want to see my bookmarks, I'll go back down here and it's bookmarked right there. And then I can also click show bookmark bar. And then next time I open up a tab, I can just click that link and it'll take me right to the page. Go ahead and enter your login username and password. And this will take us to the call panel. So if this is your first time logging in, you should see a pop up from your browser asking you to use your microphone. And for that, you're going to want to hit allow. And then it's going to ask you to show notifications. And again, click allow. I'm going to switch to full screen so we can see it a little better. So this is your call panel. The title is called users, um, but to default, it's only going to show your extension. I would recommend adding users to the call panel that you want to monitor or transfer calls to regularly. So to add users, you can click this uh, button at the top left, and then it will show all the users within your phone system. So you can scroll through and see all the users that have already been added, but none of them appear here in the call panel. To do that, you're going to want to just click this append to the buddies list, and then they'll pop up. You can add all the extensions if you want to, or if you'd like to remove them, you can just click that button again and then they will disappear from the call panel. So it's very customizable. And if you'd like to change the order, you can just drag and drop them. So what this call panel is doing is it's giving us a real-time status of all of these users. If any of these users get a phone call, I'll actually be able to see that they're on the phone and how long they've been on a phone call and who they're talking to. One useful feature of the call panel is that I can very quickly call these users with just the click of a button. I can also see each of the user's status. Right now, I'm currently online, but if I wanted to change my status, I could click my icon up here, hover over this status button right here, and then I could click away, busy, offline, and I can also type in a custom status. A quick note on the visual of the call panel. You can click your icon up here at the top right, and then it gives you this UI theme toggle. Right now it's on the white screen, but if I click that, I'll switch to dark mode, which is actually my preference. But for this video, we can keep it on the light mode. Now that you're logged into your call panel, as soon as you get a call, that'll actually appear right here in your browser. You can move on to other things on different browsers. But when you get a call, that phone call will appear since you've allowed notifications. So let's go over an example of receiving a phone call. And here we're on a call. And as you can see, we've got status of how long we've been on that phone call and who we're talking to. So here in this little phone call box, we've got several options here. The first one is to simply hang up. The second one is a dial pad. So if I click that, a dial pad will appear. So if you were to call into an IVR where it gives you the option to press one or press two to reach different attendants, you can do that right here. You can also put the caller on hold with this button right here. By clicking that, you're putting the caller on hold and they'll be hearing hold music. Let's go ahead and take that caller off hold. This is the button that you can use to mute yourself. If you'd like to adjust the volume, you can do that right here. 
Here we have a park feature. So we'll talk about parking later in this video. Here we have the option to join a three-way conference. And then this is how we can transfer to other callers. So by clicking that, I've got this drop down here where I can actually type in the extension of the number I'd like to transfer to. A blind transfer is when you're gonna send the caller you're talking to directly to the person you're transferring the call to. But an intended transfer would be if you'd like to speak to the person you're transferring to before the transfer takes place. So if I wanted to transfer to Steven, I could type in Steven's number and hit transfer right there. And then that would mean that I would ring into Steven. And then I could let Steven know who's on the phone and then I could complete the transfer. Now those are two ways to transfer, but I found that the easiest way to transfer is by simply clicking this whole box, dragging it, and then dropping it into the person I'd like to transfer the call to. Once you drag it over them, it's gonna ask you if you do want to transfer. And then you can simply click confirm or cancel. And then lastly, you have the option to record the phone call. Recording will begin as soon as you click the record button. If I wanna stop recording, I can just click stop. You'll be able to listen to those recorded phone calls in your call history, which we'll look at later in this video. To hang up, simply click the hang up button. So let's say we want to make a call and it's not just one of our few contacts within our system, but we want to call the outside world. To pull up our browser phone, we just have to click this phone icon at our top right. And that's going to pull up three boxes. So the one on our left is our contacts. This is our list of contacts that we've already imported into our system. Now we're not gonna go over importing contacts in this video, but just know that if you've got a spreadsheet of contacts that you would like uploaded, you can send that over to Ambit and we'll get that imported for you. What's really nifty about this is that in our call box, which is our center box, we can dial out a number with our keypad and we can make the call from there, but we can actually type out somebody's name. And if they're in our contacts, it's gonna filter out that contact for us right there. So this is gonna search names and numbers, which is very handy. And then on our right, we've got our call history, which will show all the calls are incoming and outgoing calls. So if we wanna just dial a number quickly, we can just click that once and it's gonna go ahead and make the call. I'll hang up right here, pull up our phone call box once more. So this button here on our far right, that's our contacts. That's toggling that on our left. So I click that, I can pull it back out. This is our call history, which is the one on our right. And I can toggle that on and off. Um, it's nifty having that there. This dial pad button on our far left, I'll click that and I'll that'll bring out our dial pad. And from here, I can just click to dial, which is very easy. But one more thing I wanted to show you is, it's, it's so easy to make a call from call panel that all I have to do is actually copy a number. So if I find a number online and I wanna call it, all I have to do is highlight it and then I can copy it. Now that that's copied on our clipboard, I can go back to call panel and I can actually paste that number right here, parentheses and dashes and all, I can still click it, it's gonna make the call. So it's very easy to just copy a number and paste it into that dial box and it'll make the call. This last icon here is our voicemail, which we will get to shortly, but clicking that will simply dial in to your voicemail. Let's talk about parking. So the difference between parking a caller and putting a caller on hold is that when you put a caller on hold, only you can retrieve that same caller. But when you put a caller in a parking lot, then other users and agents can answer that phone call. Parking lots can be really useful for call centers that have a high call volume and you're needing to transfer calls quickly and often. So for example, if I were to answer this incoming call and then click this park button, that caller would disappear from this section of the call panel. But then I'll see this notification here over parking. So if I click that, I can see that 701 parking is being used and the caller is Jesse Shoup. Now everybody using the A-Meeting call panel can see this parking lot and then can answer this call. And to pick up the caller, simply click retrieve call parked. And now we're back on the phone call.
Next, let's talk about chat. The chat panel should be pretty straightforward. If I wanted to start a new chat, I could click this pencil, type in the user I want to start a new chat with, and type in my message. Then click Start Conversation. Now I can see that chat message down here in my direct messages. I can continue the conversation here. If I wanted to add pictures or files in the chat, I could do that here, and I could add files from my computer. I can also use emojis. If you click this settings button here, you've got a couple more features where you can see files and search the message, which will pop out a search feature on your right. I can search a keyword and it'll filter the results below. To create a group message, just add all the users you'd like in the group. Next, it's going to ask if you want the channel to be private or public. We'll keep this one private, and then you'll have to name the channel. And that group message will appear under your private channels. If you were to make it public, it would appear right here. Next, let's talk about call queues. So call queues are great for call centers. And they're going to give you some statistics on all the queues that you put in your queue panel. So right now, I've got two call queues laid out right here. If I wanted to add them, it's just like the call panel feature. I can add them to the dashboard by clicking this symbol here, and I can remove them. And these are going to give me live stats on each of the queues that I've got laid out in the dashboard. Right now I can see we've got one caller on hold in the main queue, some statistics of completed calls, abandoned calls, total agents, paused, unpaused. So it's going to give me the typical call queue statistics you'd expect from a call center. Our conferences tab is going to lay out audio conferences, which is different from the video conferences, which we'll look at next. So just like users and call queues, you've got this drop down on your left, and that's going to show you your conference options. So I can show that and hide that. So this one's called daily huddle. This is the number for it, the user pin, the admin pin. And as users join that conference, you'll be able to see that right here. So from here, I can actually join the conference by clicking this button. Jesse? Thank you. You are currently the only person in this conference. So now that I've joined the conference, I can see that one member is in that conference. I can actually invite other people to the conference. I can actually search their name or their number. And by clicking that, that would ring their phone, inviting them into that audio conference. Next, let's talk about video conferences. If I wanted to create a new video conference, I just click Create Video Conference. You can give it a name, an expiration date. You can do admins or leave empty uh, for no admin. And same with users. If you want this to be an exclusive video conference, you can select the users who would be allowed to use it. Or you can leave it blank, and that will include all users, as you can see the text right there. So we've got some additional features that we don't have to dive into here. But basically, once you create it, uh, give it a name, you can go ahead and create that conference here. But we've already made a couple conferences here on our left. And for this example, I'll go ahead and show you how to jump into a video conference. So you got two options here. You can do join video conference, which will pull up some of the conference features right here on our right. We've got a new pop-up. If you're doing this for the first time, it's going to ask you to use your camera. So you're going to have to click Allow to use your uh, camera in a meeting. So there we have our camera. The most important information here uh, would be your URL of your conference. So I can actually copy that. And I can now send that out in an email or put that on a web page and share that with whoever. And all they have to do is click that link and they'll be in the conference as well. They don't need to make a new account. They don't need to download anything. They can jump into that video conference um, very easily. So if I pulled up a new browser and pasted that conference in a new browser, 
it's going to take me straight into that video conference. But once you do that, all you have to do is type in your name and click join meeting and then you're in. So that URL is super nifty. But say we want to jump into full screen mode. I can either do that from right here, clicking full screen. By the way, that, uh, that this URL here, you can also copy it by simply clicking this button. Or I can click uh, open in a new browser tab, which will be useful. And uh, this button over here does the exact same thing. So this is just going to create a new tab. And again, I'm going to have to click allow to use my microphone and video. And here we are. And to join the meeting, I'm just going to have to give myself a name and click join meeting. And we're in. And so the meeting features are, are pretty self-explanatory. We've got a mute and unmute button here. We've got our camera start and stop over here. And you've got your screen sharing right here. Um, when I click that, it's going to give you several options. You can do your tabs, your window, or your entire screen. I've got two screens here. Um, so you can select what you're actually going to share with all these features. It's uh, very handy. And you've got a chat within the video conference. Um, that can be a super helpful for um, like sharing information. Um, and you can you got a couple of other options here. You can see all the participants if you click that button and they'll lay out right here. If you've got a lot of participants, you can toggle the view. Um, and that would make sense if we had more users inside the conference. And then lastly, we've got uh, this extra settings button where you're going to get even more options. So if I wanted to change my background uh, to like a, a picture, which I could actually upload, or just like a blur or slight blur, that kind of thing, uh, that could be helpful um, with choosing a background. So, uh, And then lastly, if I wanted to invite a new uh, person to the meeting, all I would have to do is click that button there, copy the link, and email that link out. Um, I could get to an email by clicking any of these or just going to a new screen and, and going into my email and, and sending it that way. So if I want to end the conference, just go ahead and click this, leave the meeting, and we are out. Let's talk about call history real quick. So earlier in this video, we mentioned that you can see your call history in this dial box on your right, but if you select your profile icon, you can have uh, access to your, your full call history here. So let's go ahead and click that. And the first thing we'll see is that it's filtering out our call history based on today's date. But if I change that filter date to a couple days back and then click filter, it's going to show me all the calls within that date range. So here I can see you know, the extensive call history. Earlier in this video, I mentioned that you can listen to your recorded calls in your call history. Well, this is where you would go to listen to those. So if you did record a call, you can see that this download button is a little bit darker than all the others, and that actually gives me the option to download that phone call. So I can actually call that number back with this icon. I can listen to that call right here in my browser, or I can download that call to my desktop. And so all my recorded calls will be available here in call history. Lastly, let's talk about our voicemail tab. Now, when somebody leaves me a voicemail, this is the page that I'll come to to look at all those. So I actually left myself a voicemail. And so if I wanted to listen to that, it's very easy. You just come up here and click play. And I can listen to it that way. And that's going to play it over the browser. And then I can download that file right here. And that's going to download straight to my computer. So I've got the wave or the MP3 file right there. Um, but say I wanted to send this voicemail to somebody else on a meeting. Well, I can do that really easily just by clicking this transfer message button. And so it brings this up. And so who do I want to send it to? Well, I can type in their name and send it to them that way. Or if I know their extension number, send it to them that way. Very easy. As soon as I do that, click their name, click transfer, they'll have that voicemail in their voicemail inbox. And then lastly, I can actually look at the transcript. It's going to lay out the transcript of that whole voicemail. So this one was very simple. It was just a test voicemail, but I can, I can click that and copy it and um, do whatever I need to with that. So a very handy voicemail menu right here. If I want to get to some additional settings, 
I can just click this settings gear over here. And this is gonna pull out a bunch of additional voicemail settings that I can play with. I'm not gonna get into all these, but uh, the main thing you can see here is that you can change your voicemail pin uh, right here. So right now it's one, two, three, four. When I click into calling the voicemail, that's what it's gonna ask me for. It's gonna ask me for a pin. That's the pin uh, right here. So if I wanted to change that, uh, it's so easy to do. I change it and click save, and then my voicemail pin has been changed. A couple of other helpful options right here. And then um, you've got greeting. So yes, you can call into your voicemail and change your greeting that way, or you can just record your voicemail greetings here. So you've got your, uh, your name, your busy greeting, and your unavailable greeting. You can record those over a voice memo and upload them uh, through your computer or record them straight from your browser and reset them, change them. Um, so you're gonna have default voicemail greeting. So your voicemail is already good to go. But if you wanna create a custom voicemail, you can do that from this greeting mailbox right here. So super easy to get to, super easy to change. One more thing about these voicemails, if you've got uh, your voicemails piling up, which in this case, I've only got one, but if you've got a lot, you can use this search button up here and search for your voicemails that way. Or you can also click this filter button here on your right. You can actually filter down voicemails by date. So if you start to have a very packed voicemail inbox, um, you can sort through your voicemails that way. So the last thing I wanted to cover in this video is your settings box. So if you click your profile at your top right and you click your settings button here, this is gonna pull up your call panel settings, which is gonna have some helpful information. But the main thing that you may be interested in will be call forward and follow me. And so if you want to, to have your number forwarding to your cell phone, this is the place to do it. Very easy, you just toggle it on and then you put your, you would put your cell phone number or whoever's number you would want to forward your calls to. So call forward is very simple, straightforward. You just put in your number and then you'd save it. So you do your extension number, another person's extension number or cell phone number, um, and either one will work. And so let's talk about follow me. What's the difference between follow me and call forward? Well, follow me, will ring your regular extension before forwarding on to say your cell phone number. So say you want it to ring your browser phone or your desk phone first before ringing somebody else's phone or your cell phone number. You would enable follow me and then you would select how long you want it to ring your extension first. So say I'd want it to ring my extension for 10 seconds. And if I don't answer that in 10 seconds, then I want it to forward on to my cell phone number and I could just click add. And I can actually add multiple numbers. And so what that's gonna do is it's gonna ring my extension for as long as I've set it, so in this case, 10 seconds. And then it's gonna ring these other numbers for as long as I set those numbers to ring. So this can be super useful. I'm gonna go ahead and turn all these off because I don't want follow me on uh, for my extension right now. Um, but either one of these um, could be super helpful, very easy to get to, very easy to change. So you can see we've got some other settings on here that we won't dive into in this video, but hopefully this video was helpful for you to get started. If you have any additional questions, please reach out to us. You can call our help desk at any time or, or email our help desk and we'll get back with you. We hope this video was helpful and we look forward to working with you in the future.